guys, welcome back to In Case of Econ Struggles. Welcome to another causal inference struggle. Today we're talking about regression discontinuity designer RDD. Specifically, I'll give a motivated example for how RDD works. We'll talk about how we estimate the effect of X on Y using RDD. We'll talk about the assumptions we make. And in particular, we'll talk about why the RD estimate is a local average treatment effect for compliers at the threshold. So timestamps are below, but let's get right into this motivated example. The motivating example we're using today is a little different than ones we've used in previous videos. We're still talking about stress on a level from 0 to 10, but instead of talking about the effect of owning a cat on your stress level, we are going to be talking about the effect of becoming an air traffic controller on your stress level. Now the way I've set this up, notice that on the axis here I have this Z variable. What is the Z variable? Well, in order to become an air traffic controller, you have to pass an air traffic skill assessment or an ATSA test. And we'll say that the minimum score you need in order to become an air traffic controller, the minimum score you need in order to pass this test is a 70%. So we call this ATSA score at variable, you're running variable, and we call this Z score, this minimum threshold critical value of Z. So the red line on this graph is your treatment status, that is your X variable, that is whether or not you work as an air traffic controller. We're going to say that you need to pass this test in order to become an air traffic controller. So if you get less than a 70, you fail in your treatment status or your X value is equal to zero. And if you pass the ATSA, we're going to assume that you get the offer to become an air traffic controller. We're also going to assume that everyone who gets the offer takes the job, which means that if you receive over a 70% on this ATSA test, you become an air traffic controller and your treatment status is one. Now in green, we have your stress level given your ATSA score. And you can see that it's a continuous variable of your ATSA score all the way up until 70 because you are not an air traffic controller. And then right when you just barely pass this test, your stress level is going to jump up to here. Why does it jump up? Because you've changed from not becoming an air traffic controller to becoming an air traffic controller. And then once again, after you become an air traffic controller, your stress level is still a continuous function of your Z or your ATSA score. Why does an RDD work so well in this example? Well, because your treatment status changes right at some critical value, some threshold of the running variable. And we can exploit that change at the threshold to find the effect of becoming an air traffic controller on your stress level. That effect of becoming an air traffic controller on your stress level is going to be represented by this jump in your outcome variable right here. Just to make that a little more mathematical, what exactly is our RD estimate? It is the discontinuity in Y at the threshold divided by the discontinuity in X at the threshold. So it's just your change in Y over your change in X right at this threshold, right at the 70% ATSCO score. If you wanted to be even more mathematical about it, you could use limits and you could say that it's the limit of the expected value of your stress level or your Y as you approach the threshold from the right minus the limit of the expected value of your outcome variable given Z as you approach Z star or as you approach the threshold from the left divided by the same thing for X. I just remember it this way. I think it's easier to remember that the RD estimate is the discontinuity in Y divided by the discontinuity at X right at the threshold right at Z star. Now, in our example, we said that everyone who passes the ATSA gets an offer to become an air traffic controller, and everyone who gets an offer to be an air traffic controller takes the job. So notice that our jump in treatment at the threshold was from 0 to 1. Everyone went from not being treated or not becoming an air traffic controller to suddenly becoming an air traffic controller right at the threshold. And so we would call that a sharp RD. Why do we call it a sharp RD? Well, it's because treatment goes exactly from 0 to 1 right at the threshold. If we relax some of those assumptions, we're going to get to a fuzzy RD. What's an example of a fuzzy RD? Well, maybe if you just barely fail the ATSA, maybe you get like a 68. Maybe the FAA still finds a way to offer you a job and you still can sort of become an air traffic controller. There's very few people who this option is available to. So your expected treatment status, if your ATSA score is 68, is not 1. Maybe it's like 0.25. And then people who just barely pass the ATSA, maybe not all of them take the job. Maybe you get like a 72 and you're like, well, I'm not really sure that I actually want to do this. My score wasn't that great. So not everyone who just barely passes the ATSA actually becomes an air traffic controller. So your jump in your treatment variable at the threshold given Z is not from zero to one. Maybe it's from something more than one to something slightly less than one. And so your discontinuity in X at the threshold is somewhere between zero and one. And that's how you know it's a fuzzy RD. In both cases, the effect of X on Y is still just the discontinuity in Y over the discontinuity in X right at the threshold. So your formula doesn't change. You just need to know that a sharp versus fuzzy ID is dependent on how your X or how your treatment variable changes right at the threshold. Now that we know how to calculate an RD, let's talk about why an RD estimate is a local average treatment effect for compliers at the threshold. And to illustrate that, I've taken a fuzzy RD graph and I've added some people to our graph. 
Again, your treatment is whether or not you're an air traffic controller, your outcome is your stress from zero to 10, and your running variable or your Z variable is this asset score where your Z star is still 70. So now the reason we're doing an RD is we're trying to get a random experiment out of something that is not inherently a random experiment. When we're trying to make a random experiment, we want our selection bias to be zero or to go to zero. We want our estimate just to be the effect of X on Y. We don't want our estimate to capture things like, well, people who just barely pass the ATSA are fundamentally different for other reasons than people who just barely fail the ATSA. So what do we mean by just barely pass and just barely fail? Well, let's make it sort of extreme. Let's say you've got these four people. You've got Bill. Bill got a 10% on the ATSA. Mary got a 68. Dave got a 71 and Barb got a 95. If I were to just compare people to the right of the threshold to people just to the left of the threshold, I would be comparing Dave and Barb to Bill and Mary. You might say, well, Mary and Dave sort of make sense, but Barb and Bill do not. Barb is way out here and Bill is way over here. So Barb and Bill are probably different for reasons other than one of them became an air traffic controller and one of them did not. So the stress level of Barb and Bill are very different but we shouldn't really want to attribute all of that difference to just the fact that Barb became an air traffic controller and Bill did not. But if you look at Dave and Mary, Dave got a 71 and Mary got a 68, which is sort of random, right? Maybe each of them guessed on one particular question. Dave happened to guess right, Mary happened to guess wrong, and so they ended up on other sides of the threshold. And so that's sort of random in terms of why Dave became an air traffic controller and Mary did not. Let's also assume that Mary and Dave are both compliers. It's important that Mary and Dave are both compliers because I am using the fact that had Mary passed this test, she would have become an air traffic controller. And had Dave just barely failed this test, he would not have become an air traffic controller, even though we're in a fuzzy RD setting and the jump in X at the threshold is not exactly equal to one. So Mary and Dave are compliers. Mary and Dave are probably very similar. And so if I compare the Daves of the world to the Marys of the world, I can be pretty confident that any differences in the stress level between the Daves and the Marys of the world are due to the fact that the Daves became an air traffic controller and the Marys did not. And so when I am just using the Daves and Marys, that is a local average treatment effect. So that is why we are a local average treatment effect for people just at the threshold. I really only want to compare people who are really close to this Z star value. And it's for compliers because if Mary and Dave would not have changed what they did based on what side of the threshold they were on, then I do not have any counterfactual for Mary and Dave. And I can't calculate a treatment effect for Mary and Dave unless they're compliers. So that is why the RD estimate is the local average treatment effect for compliers at the threshold. Now that we know what we're talking about people at the threshold, let's talk about the assumptions we need for an RD even for people at the threshold. And that assumption is basically going to be that only treatment and outcome jump at the threshold variable or Z star of the running variable. So the way we are going to look at this is we're gonna look at some controls for the different people based on their ASCO score. And we want those observable characteristics to be continuous at Z star. Really what we want to show is we want to show that the unobservables are continuous at Z star, but unobservables are inherently unobservable. So at the very least, we need to show that things we can observe in the data, like Mary and Dave's age, their education, maybe some other factors about Mary and Dave that we think might influence stress, that that it does not jump at Z star. Why is it important that it does not jump at Z star? Well, we're using this jump in Y to measure the effect of X on Y. And if Y is jumping because W is jumping, then we are going to misattribute some of the effect of becoming an air traffic controller on stress level to the fact that some of these controls are jumping right at Z star. And if the controls are not jumping at Z star, then it makes sense to attribute all of this jump in Y to the effect of becoming an air traffic controller and not some other factor that's jumping at Z star. Put a slightly different way, if we assume that those unobservables and those observables are continuous at Z star, that's going to tell us that Y1 and Y0 given Z are continuous at Z star. That is our main assumption for this RD estimate. And so you can see, again, we're using potential notation. This is Y1 given Z, so this is your stress level given that you are an air traffic controller based on your ASCO score. And this is your outcome or your stress level if you were not an air traffic controller given your ASCO score. And if we assume a sharp RD, notice that over here, you're a Y0 because you didn't pass the ATSA. And then right at the threshold, right when you pass the ATSA, you jump up to this Y1. This red line to the left of the threshold is a counterfactual. This would be as if you could become an air traffic controller even if you fail the ATSA. And this is your Y0. This is your counterfactual if you had not taken the air traffic control job given your ATSCA score. So if we assume that observables and unobservables do not jump at the threshold, 
then your Y given Z will jump right here at the threshold. And that is entirely due to your ASCA score, entirely due to the fact that you became an air traffic controller and not due to other confounders. How might you implement an RDD in practice? Well, what you're gonna do is you're gonna use a local polynomial fit on either side of the threshold. So I'm gonna estimate a local polynomial fit with the confidence interval to the right of Z star. I'm going to estimate a separate local polynomial fit with a confidence interval to the left of Z star. I'm going to use those local polynomial fits to estimate the expected value of Y given Z star as you approach Z star from the left. Similarly, I'm going to use this blue local polynomial fit to get the limit of your outcome, the limit of your stress level at Z star as you approach Z star from the right. I'm gonna use those two points and I'm gonna get the discontinuity in Y at Z star. I'm gonna estimate my compliance rate as we've done similarly in an IV estimate. And I'm going to take the ratio of those two things and that is going to give me my RD estimate. So hopefully this gives you a little more intuition on how an RD works, the assumptions we need for an RD estimate and why an RD estimate is a local average treatment effect for compliers at the threshold. If you have any questions, comment below. Otherwise, like and subscribe, and we will see you next time for another case of Econ Struggles.